Shalom, and welcome to Light of the Hill Ministries. In today's teaching, we will continue on our study of Genesis. If you want to follow along, I will be posting this in the comment box below. Now, under the teaching. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with Elohim. Genesis 6, verse 9. Paulus teaches us how to be like Noah in being perfect or mature in his letter to the believers in Ephesus. Husbands, love your wives as Messiah also did love the assembly and gave himself for it in order to set it apart and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word in order to present it to himself a splendid assembly not having spot or wrinkle or any of the sort but that it might be set apart and blameless. Ephesians chapter 5 verses 25 through 27 We are made clean and caused to walk in maturity before Yahweh by the washing of the word. This should remind us of the bronze basin that was used in the tabernacle where the priest cleansed her hands and feet with water drawn from the bronze basin before entering the set-apart place to perform the needed service. And he made the basin of bronze and its stand of bronze from the bronze mirrors of the serving women who did service at the door of the tent of meeting. Exodus 38, verse 8. The bronze basin was made from the mirrors of the women who used to worship at the gate, and it demonstrates for us the clear lesson of how we are to look into the mirror of the word and not forget who we are, and to make sure that we are washed in all that we do, as the word equips us to be washed, set apart, and clean in our walk and in our works of righteousness. But he that looked into the perfect Torah, that of freedom, and continues in it, not becoming a hearer that forgets, but a doer of work, this one shall be blessed in his doing of the Torah. James 1, verse 25. His word gives us all we need for life and reverence and highlights the clear fact that we have been given all that we need to be mature and clean before our master. This washing of the word can be seen in the Hebrew word tom. In the ancient pictographic script, the adjective tom looks like this. Ta is the first letter of Tom in the Hebrew, and it is pictured as two cross sticks and can represent for us as a seal, covenant, mark, or sign. Mem is the last letter in the word Tom and is pictured as water and also carries the meaning of chaos from the storms of the sea and can also picture that which is mighty or massive, as well as the unknown. We are also able to understand this letter as representing the nations, for the nations are often likened to the seas in Scripture. Woe to the uproar of many people who make a noise like the roar of the sea, seas, and to the rushing of nations that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. Isaiah 17, verse 12. This also carries for us the picture of washing as we understand the function of water being that which cleanses us and sustains us, showing us how we are washed and sustained by the living waters of the Word. This, this letter can also represent any liquid, especially blood. These two pictographic letter, letters can render for us the following meaning, sealed through washing. The question that becomes, how do we become sealed through washing? Now, Yeshua teaches us that you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. John 15, verse 3. 
So we see that it is through Yahweh who is Yahweh's word that cleanses us. And Yahweh's word is the best cleansing agent. It's what seals us as we allow his spirit to cleanse us. This is one of the reasons why it's so important that you listen to the word. Even now, as you study the word, you're being cleansed. There is a purification taking place in your heart. Why? Because Yahweh is there in you, teaching you what you need to know. And we should let him dwell in us, as Paulus teaches us in Colossians. Let the word of Messiah dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing with pleasure in your hearts to the Master in psalms, and songs of praise, and spiritual songs. Colossians 3, verse 16. Let the word dwell in you, so that it teaches you to be mature. And in that maturity, we can begin to sing psalms, sing songs of praise, and spiritual songs unto Yahweh, who declares us righteous through his Son, Yahushua. His word wipes out fear and replaces it with faith. The word of Yahweh is a cleanser. It cleanses anyone who comes under its influence, power, and authority. And reading his word allows us to allows love to live in our hearts, driving out the fear, as it says, There is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear, because fear holds punishment. And he who fear he who fears has not been made perfect in love. First John four verse eighteen. It is his word that matures us in love, so that fear won't have any place in our lives. Not only do we accomplish washing in his word, but also through Yahweh Shua's blood. As his blood cleanses us from all sin, it is through his word which we're able to which we are to be meditating on day and night that we're able to be continually washed and set apart for service under the king. King Dawid understood how important the Torah of Yahweh was when he said, The Torah of Yahweh is perfect, bringing back the being. The witness of Yahweh is trustworthy, making wise the simple. The orders of Yahweh are straight, rejoicing the heart. The command of Yahweh is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of Yahweh is clean, standing forever. The right rulings of Yahweh are true. They are righteous altogether, more desirable than gold, than much fine gold. It's sweeter than honey, and the honeycomb. Also, your servant is warned by them, in guarding them, there is great reward. Psalms 19, verses 7 through 11. In the above psalm, the Hebrew word that is translated as perfect is tamin, tamin. And remember, and we remember, it means complete, whole, sound, perfect, without blemish, blameless, which is also used in Psalms 119, verse 1. Blessed are the perfect in the way who walk in the Torah of Yahweh. To walk in the Torah of Yahweh is to walk upright and be mature. Those who cast aside the Torah of Yahweh behind them and claim that it is no longer valid or any use are basically refusing to be perfect, that is to say, mature, as Yahweh says, What right? have you to recite my laws or make my covenant in your mouth while you hate instruction and cast my words behind you. Psalms 50 verses 16 through 17 Those who cast Yahweh's words behind them have no right even to recite his words. This is a harsh word but one that 
we should that we all should take heed because without the word of Yahweh no one can learn to walk in maturity and be the bride that Yahushua is coming for. The question is, are we strengthening ourselves in the word on a daily basis? Because in doing so, it equips us, it gives us the ability to stand firm in the Messiah. And we must be like the psalmist who asked Yahweh, saying, Let my heart be perfect in your laws so that I am not put to shame. Psalms 119, verse 80. The word perfect here is also the word tamin. And the psalmist's clear desire is for his heart to mature in Yahweh's laws, so that he might possess his life by perseverance and not be ashamed, and to stand upright and be set apart and mature in the midst of a corrupt generation like Moshe, oh not Moshe, Noah did, Moshe too, but anyway. King David tells us the same thing when he asked Yahweh, saying, Search me, O El, and know my heart. Try me, and know my thoughts, and see if an idolatrous way is in me. It lead me in the way everlasting. Psalms 139, verses 23 through 24. It all begins with being open before Yahweh and allowing Him to deal with the sins in our hearts. Dawid was willing for Yahweh to search him and put his heart to the test. And a mature heart is a searchable heart, which means we, all, we allow Yahweh to examine and test our thoughts and emotions. Many people today have forgotten that Yahweh asked that they asked Yahweh to search their hearts, that he has removed that idolatrous thing from their lives. And they're angry with him because of it. As followers of Messiah, we should be grateful for the things he accomplishes in our lives, because he desires for us to be mature in the same way he is. The washing of the word and the blood of Yahushua go hand in hand. As the writer of what is commonly called John says, If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and are not doing the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Yahushua, his son, Yahushua Messiah, his son, cleanses us from all right, all sin. 1 John 1, verses 6 through 7. Hold on just one minute. Someone wants to say hello. Hello, YouTube people. Hello, people. Praise Yahweh. She had to come in. Anyway, continuing on. We are to walk in his instruction with a mature heart and the perfect knowledge of his loving word. A mature heart is a heart that has the Torah written upon it and submits to the clear authority of Yahweh. The command to be mature has not changed. The question is, how mature are you? We serve a perfect, that is to say, ma mature, mighty one, and are called to be mature and set apart. Paulus tells us that we're not there yet, but we press on and lay hold of it. Not that I have already received or already been perfected, but I press on and lay hold of that which the Messiah, Yahushua, has also laid hold of me. Brothers, I do not count myself to have laid hold of it yet, but only this, forgetting what is behind it, reaching out for what, is it, for what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the high calling of Elohim and Messiah of Yeshua. As many then as are perfect should have this in mind, have this mind. And if you think differently in any respect, 
Elohim shall also reveal this to you. Philippians 3, verses 12 through 15. It is time for the bride and Messiah to stand and be mature, which requires that we, we be properly prepared in all our ways so that we can be strengthened in the truth and mature before Yahweh, enduring as faithful servants of Yahweh and remaining steadfast in not allowing acts of corruption to influence our lives. Noah was righteous and mature in his generation, and we who are in Messiah should be as well. May we press on toward the goal for the prize of the high calling of Elohim and Messiah, so that in the end he will say, Well done, good and trustworthy servant. You were trustworthy over a little I shall set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. Matthew 25, verse 23. It is only then that we will arrive and be fully mature before him. Hallelujah. In the next teaching, we will be talking about how Noah walked with Yahweh, Yahweh willing. If you like this teaching, please comment, like, share, subscribe to the channel, and click on the notification button to be notified of the next teaching. Yahweh bless, and shalom to your homes.